You are listening to The Twilight Effect, an unofficial Twilight podcast. Welcome back, everyone, to The Twilight Effect <laughs> podcast. I'm so surprised we're both here. Um, Mel and I have I had quite the journey over the last 24 hours. Oh my gosh, I know. <laughs> we both, we rewatched this film um, so we could talk to you all about it, but we generally rewatch them together. And the powers that be above just did not want that to happen. I no. flew in from New York and we were like, okay, this is going to be a good time. And I like flew in, everything was going great. My tooth fell out. <laughs> I had to go to the dentist immediately <laughs> on emergency. Your cat is like... Damaged all of his paws, trying to claw out the yeah. door with a UTI, and I mean, just like and you've got your stairs are being redone. There was a, a lot of things. So, needless to say, she and I both watched half of this film in the evening and half of this film at like five o'clock this morning. So, but we texted all the way through it last night, so yeah. we were there <laughs> we in were spirit <laughs> together. <laughs> um, so, this is going to be a really fun episode. So, yeah. buckle up, everyone. Hopefully. You uh, feed into our delirium. Okay, <laughs> so without further ado, um, this was released. This is also so sad. This is our last rewatch. I know. I, I mean, was... there's three parts to this rewatch, but this I is the know. last film. And that's why it was so sad that we couldn't watch it together, but we, we could we rewatch intensely it together. Text it. <gasps> I did. I think I'm I like, texted you and I was like, that. it's good. <laughs> <laughs> Bella's a badass. Yeah, <laughs> I was into I was into Bella. Um, okay, so we'll go through all of the deets. So it was released November twelfth, two thousand twelve. Bella awakes as a vampire from her life threatening labor, and her newborn daughter Renesmee proves to be very special indeed. When Bella adjusts to her new state of being, Renesmee experiences accelerated growth. When the Volturi learn of the baby's existence, they declare her to be an abomination and sentence the Cullens to death. Bella, Edward, and the rest of the clan seek help from allies around the world to protect their family. This was written by Melissa Rosenberg, based on the novel by Stephanie Meyer. Director was Bill Condon, and the runtime was one hour and 55 minutes of— This one was, like, a lot of action. Like, I feel like a lot of the other ones, like, were waiting for some kind of payoff, and, like, all the things were happening in this one pretty quickly. Oh, yeah. Well, first, I have to just like back up a minute and state that this was almost exactly one month before I met you in New York. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I'm, you're really good at that. I'm like, I have no concept of time. <laughs> well, <laughs> also, I knew who I was meeting versus you knew who you were meeting, if that makes sense. I was like, holy S, I'm meeting Ashley Green. But, but you're also, like, I'm meeting Alice Conlon, let's be honest. Oh, totally. <laughs> but I know when I met Tom, and then I know when we went to that Christmas party, mm -hmm. and I looked at the date, I'm like, there it is. So not only had I just met you and this was super exciting for me, it was only a month before that the last movie came out. Okay, so, so I, I must have fresh. been like beside myself. Yeah. Well, who knows? Because we were both drunk because we obviously have... <laughs> Taking shots Stretch. out of ice luges. We a photo of us taking shots out of ice luges, which is a really fun party trick. Yeah. Um. No, th th so this movie gets right off. Oh, yeah. We open up, um, and Bella is a newly formed vampire, mm -hmm. and you really get to see, like, her eyes open, and you get to see kind of all of her senses, um, and she has this, like, perfect vision. All of her senses are great. Her skin is Flawless. flawless. Um, she's extremely strong. Yeah. She actually, I thought it was really funny. Now we're to the point where like, she hugs Edward and he's like, <laughs> wimp, <laughs> <Ella>. <laughs> you're killing me. Um, so she's like super strong, uh, baby newborn vampire, which is really exciting to see like how things will start to unravel in that. Yeah. Well, I don't know how many people picked up on this, but I found it really cool the way they got into the movie, which was everything in the environment, Chris, like, freezing over, mm -hmm. but up close, which is, I think, really indicative of what was going on inside of her body. First it was burning, and then it was freezing right, over. Right, because that's yeah. what it does. It, like, almost crackles and freezes over. And, I mean, right? They did, they, they did that on purpose. Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. They're geniuses. I, it, I, I really like that part. I think it went, I thought it was bold. I think, yeah, I bold think it, start. I think it went really well. I think it went really well. I know. <laughs> Of course it did. You know what I mean? It was just so cool to see all over again. I'm like, yes. Yeah. And then she looks, it's like cool to see, like there, I mean, obviously it's the same person, but like there is a transformation oh, with totally. Bella. totally. And I'm wondering 
if you know, or if you could just tell in her demeanor, nature, whatever, her onset presence, did she just like have so much more fun being this vampire? Oh, yeah. I think it's like we really get to see, like leading up into this point, there is like, you know that Bella is a strong-willed person and uh, you kind of get to see her be like a little bit of a badass, but there, she's always a weak human. Like, right. There's always that part to it, and she always needs protecting, and it's really frustrating for her. And then in this moment, it's like, she no longer needs to be protected. Edward needs to be protected from her. <laughs> um, and so I think that part is is really cool. The I think the the makeup and the the contacts and all that good stuff, like nobody liked that. Yeah. So that part, I, I'm pretty sure Kristen was on the same, uh, the same train we were. We're like, that part's... No one likes that. But the outcome of it is very cool. Well, she cool. had contacts before, though. Yes. But the red ones were worse. Yeah, the ones that are painted, the red ones and the um, the yellow ones, are they were like hand-painted, which was incredible, but they were kind of scratchy. Hand-painted? Mm-hmm. That's the first time that has come out in this podcast. Well? I didn't even know you can hand-paint. Who does that on their resume? I hand-paint it's probably the, It's probably the same people that do those tiny little boats inside of those. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be the same skill set. Oh my gosh, that's wild. Yeah. I have so many questions there that have nothing to do with that, with this podcast. Let's um, move on. <laughs> but she looks great. Yeah. Um, and then we kind of have, after like that happens, it dawns on Bella. She's like, oh, I had, had a daughter. I almost died. Uh, had a daughter and I really need to meet her. And, and Edward's yeah, where like, might she be? <laughs> Ooh, let's just put that on pause. And why don't we get you some food first? Yeah. Because the we baby need you is, eating our daughter. Yeah, baby's still half human. She's not an hors d'oeuvre. <laughs> She's not an hors d'oeuvre. She has really cute rosy cheeks and your heroin blood in her. Yeah. So. <laughs> um, so yeah, anyways, they go out for the first hunt. And I really love this whole sequence because I, I think what I love about Bella in this now is or vampire Bella is that she's so, like there's like this like instant competitive nature about her. Like she's been waiting for this day. Um, and you get to see like all these magical moments with her, and then you just get to see how in awe Edward is of her. And it's, like, very, very cute. And it happens a couple of times throughout the sequence, but... Um, it's they, cute, and it's also not actually that surprising. Yeah. Yeah, but like, if it fits well, it suits her. Yeah, it makes sense for all of, for all of us watching. coming for all of you, like, yeah. especially you, Emmett. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Emmett, and Emmett's just a dumb dumb. We'll get to that. Um, <laughs> so, so, Bella and Edward go on her first vampire hunt, and... Um, it's beautiful. There's waterfalls. There's mountains. There's this like precious deer. They're and just, she can see every little thing and hear yeah. every little thing from afar. And I'm like, oh, she's going to eat the deer. She's going to eat the deer. And then, thankfully, she gets a whiff of a human. The, um, thankfully, not thankfully. She I gets know, a whiff but, of a but human. But like me, my instinct was like, oh, good. Take the human, the, not the deer. The human, not the deer. <laughs> not Bambi. Um, <laughs> so she, this like guy's climbing on a mountain. He cuts himself. Of and course she's he like, does. Whip pan. Um, and she is on him like white and rice. And, uh, <laughs> and then Edward is like, no, don't do it. Can uh, you imagine you're just like, first of all, who goes hiking up a mountain like or a cliff quite that steep by themselves? But can you imagine you're just like that minding person your business? <laughs> that James Franco played in 127 hours. But anyways, there you go. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, this girl who looks like she just crawled out of the grudge is like, booking it up the side of a cliff to come get you. I don't think he ever even noticed that no, this was all happening. Know. He has no idea how close Can you imagine? Can like, what would you, like, what can you do? <laughs> she's trying to kick looked, her in the face. She looks like she came from the grudge. You're just trying to kick her right yeah, in the face. Well, she right looks, in. she has a pretty blue dress, but yeah, that'd be terrifying. <laughs> um, I would not, no matter what, I would compliment her dress and say, please don't eat yeah. me. Yeah. Um, so, but she shows this, like, incredible restraint because he's like, don't do it. And she's like, oh, okay. And then... It just jumps off, and there's like this moment where Edward's like, "That's my girl." Yeah. Um, and then we think she's going back to eat the deer, and then she eats a mountain lion instead. That was so savage. I mean, the I way it. she just like ripped into the side of this animal's neck, mm-hmm. <laughs> and he's in like bliss. He's like, "Oh, that's my girl." Isn't she lovely? <laughs> <laughs> he's love struck. It's awesome. So everything's great. He's love struck. They come back from their hunt, and you see Jacob. And, of course, I'm like, oh, how's this going to go? Because you know that, like, there's this Renesme thing happening, but you also know that he was like, I will love you basically until your heart stops. And then after that, see you later. Right. But she, they come up, and her and Jake are, like, friendly as ever. 
and it's weird. <laughs> yeah, and you can tell something's up because he then says, you guys look great together as a couple. Right. Which he would never say. She's like, did you imprint on someone? Not knowing. Well, I she know. doesn't say that, guys. But Yeah, no. But it's so like it, a thing where, yeah, Bella's probably like, huh. Yeah. There's, okay. there's The clues are starting now. Yeah. But, and you can see, like, Jake kind of, like, is, like, on the verge of telling her something, and Edward's like, don't do yeah, it. Yeah, don't do it. <laughs> Dude, Bad move, bro. Give it a minute. She will crush you. <laughs> um, literally. And so... They he like refrains and then Bella gets to finally meet Renesme and it's a sweet moment and and Renesme touches uh, Bella's face and you realize that Renesme of course she does has powers um, and with her touch she's able to show Bella her like first memories of like her being in the womb and all this crazy stuff. Really it's cool. so interesting. First of all, I know what you're gonna say. <laughs> In one, this is the cutest baby <laughs> ever in the whole wide world. In one way, you were like, dang, that baby's beautiful. But then every now and then you're like, weird. What is happening there? And I, yeah, I'm going to sum it up as weird. But it's like they did a really good job at the, in some angles, it's really, already, I mean, she came out with teeth already. That looks funny, yeah. right? But there are just some spots she where you're like, what is happening she with this I really hope my child. kid doesn't come out with teeth. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> um, um, yeah, it was, well, and they, like, this poor, you know, baby, because there's actually, like, a child that they're holding, and they, like, put dots all over this poor, like, newborn baby's face to be able to, like, create Renesmee's face on the actual baby. Oh, yeah. interesting. I was like, oh, God. So the baby, it could have just been any newborn? Yeah. So I always was, wondered how they find newborns for movies because that's really tough to just like hand over your newborn. I know. Especially like I think about that one in the ones where the babies have to cry and like you need to make them cry. Like I couldn't do it. I'd be yeah, like, yeah, you're not going to— they do cry really easily sometimes though because it, it could just be like you take their passy away and they start screaming. But like I, I don't know if I can hand over my newborn. Like do we have any idea what these people are being paid to have their newborn in there? Not enough. For that's, Sure. <laughs> That's just such a wild thing. Okay, so they put stickers all over her face, and it just kind of connects. They like put the kind of yeah, like the, the dots sparkles. on in there, like CGI. Yeah, hmm. same. So it, like, you've seen like the did. actors that do like motion stuff or whatever, and they have yeah. all the like dots over, over their face. Same thing for this kid. So she did that. look like Mackenzie. Like it, oh yeah, yeah. Well, that's the, I think I, the weird part because the eyes were still so big, and like the child's face wasn't big enough yet to keep. Yeah. Mackenzie has beautiful like big eyes. Um, she got beautiful everything. Yeah. She, Truly, like a picture like, let's of, find the most beautiful girl in the world in, in the entire world. Me. Yeah, um, but uh, <laughs> but yeah. Anyways, there there's some odd moments. There's listen. Every kid, this kid's <laughs> growing really quickly. Every kid deserves to go through like a rough patch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this was her awkward phase. This was her awkward That's phase. That's really fair. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> it's you know we have to level the playing field even in vampire and mortal world. Yeah. yeah. You're welcome. All right. Um, okay. So. Uh, we get to another awkward moment is like finally Bella meets her child and like almost instantly uh, Jacob's like, okay, I think that's enough experimenting for one day. Let me take, let me take your newborn baby away. Right. <laughs> First off, I'm like, what? She, again, she's going to crush you. <laughs> I know. And like, can you imagine, can you imagine you just like had your newborn baby and then I come over, I'm like, that's enough. That's let me. But also- You're new at this. <laughs> I know. Actually, um, Rosalie comes in at some point and does it as well. Yeah. Where it was really well accepted. But I think both of them are wrong if we're going to throw yeah, that I right out get there. Get away from my child. I, yeah. be, I died. You need to be. This child. I know you need to be like invited to ask the child. Yeah. Would you like to hold the baby? Yes. But yeah, yeah this yeah. part is. They're fa- people are really aggressive about her essay. Yeah. Um, but um, but I, this, this gets us to, I think, one of the funnier scenes in the movie because we all kind of like know that this is coming and just like waiting for this to come. Um, I couldn't have pictured how it happened so until I saw the movie and I was dying. Oh yeah. You just see her face and she's like, <laughs> what? Like she like figured the pieces all fall in, into place. It's the voice though that really gets me and there's no chance of me getting through this part ever without cracking up. You imprinted on my daughter. Like be like, whoa, what was that voice? Which is, she like turns into like, like, like she's about to She's a vampire demon. <laughs> demon. Yeah. That she's like, yeah, very demon asking you like, whoa. Oh yeah. <laughs> I was like, you better not touch her daughter or look at her ever oh, again or goodness. say her name. Oh, but it gets better, doesn't it? Oh yeah. Yeah. Keep going. It gets better. <laughs> um, it gets better. Well, you get to see her kind of like, I think she doesn't kill him, but you get to see her like physically throw him around a couple of times, which is kind of nice to see because I... <laughs> You would say that. <laughs> yeah. Listen, 
Um, well, I think there's so much like built up, like there's like passive aggressiveness and like there's so much like angst and like mental stuff going on. And like last time she hit him, she broke her, her hand. So it's really nice to see her be able to kind of like throw this, this like large muscular wolf man yeah. around. Um, and she has every right to. She does. So wait, so hold on. So <laughs> this is the part that kills me. He calls her Nessie. Yeah. Which also, I would, I, I'm fully on Bella's side here. Yes. First of all, that's not, that's not a nickname. Yeah. It's I don't even nickname. know if I can do the voice. I Please almost want to try because it's so ridiculous, but she has that like demoning voice again. Demon, is that a word? Demony. It's a demony you voice. You named my daughter after the Loch Ness Monster? <laughs> right? Is that, yeah, is that close? Yeah, pretty good. I should be an You should do impressions. I should not spill my coffee. <laughs> um, and I was dying laughing. Yeah. It was amazing. Yeah. And that was amazing. Thank you so much for that. Um, Can we get the Alice Vision face? No. Come on, I earned that. Oh, no. You uh, brought that on I'll yourself. I'll do the Alice Vision face. This is gold. It's a great, great time to tune into YouTube, you guys. <laughs> Am I doing? Oh, no, I'm going cross-eyed. <laughs> Um, it's not cross-eyed. I'm going to ask you to do impressions for the rest of this rewatch because you'll do them. Okay. Um, <laughs> Did you already get your Thrive Market box? I did. <laughs> we got ours in and it was, my daughter found it because I hid it in the pantry at first. <laughs> and then she pulled it out. We cut it open. And I always say no snacks for breakfast, but we had bought so many fun, healthy snacks. <laughs> and we sat there and me and my two and a half year old daughter ripped open every package. She's like, mommy, I thought we don't eat snacks for breakfast. I'm like, well, these are healthy snacks. These are healthy and here we are. So, yeah. <laughs> and we were just, Tom walked in oh, and we were just so laid fun. out on the floor with a box and snacks everywhere. <laughs> It's really funny. I'm not going to do that with Paul. <laughs> like, we need to test taste all of these. <laughs> Finding all your grocery items in one place at an affordable price is almost impossible now. But with Thrive Market, I get everything I need and so much more. With Thrive Market, you can shop everything from healthy pantry essentials and sustainable meat and seafood to non-toxic cleaning and beauty products, all delivered right to your door. And if you find a price lower elsewhere, Thrive Market will match it. I love that. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> Like, that is clutch. But honestly, I haven't had that happen yet. <laughs> Thrive Market carefully vets each and every item so you can trust that if they sell it, it's probably the highest quality available. Finding everything you need is easy on Thrive Market because you can filter by 90 plus values and lifestyles to find what works for you. Which is great because by then we're just eating healthy snacks all over the floor. So if you're looking for plant-based, keto, gluten-free, zero waste, BIPOC-owned brands, Thrive Market has you covered. Oh, yeah. I feel, well, we recently um, were trying to do like grain free and finding grain free snacks is pretty difficult. So I've, I've done a lot of that. Um, and then dairy. I think we're both doing dairy free. Yeah. Um, mostly. Then, yeah. A dairy free <laughs> butter on there. I found that is really, really great. Yeah. Mostly the other day. <laughs> I might have broken that, but yeah, I just, I love the fact that you can literally go through and make it so specific to you. Yeah. I actually found a new product and I'm super into different kinds of nut butters mm -hmm. and I found a macadamia nut, coconut, cashew nut, like Mix. there's no sugar, no junk. It mixes up beautifully and I just drizzled it over a banana and that was my breakfast mm -hmm. and I was pleasantly surprised. I will definitely be ordering that again. When you join Thrive Market, you are joining a community of 1 million plus members and sponsoring a family in need. I love that I love part that. so much. And with their fast and free carbon neutral shipping, you're also bettering our planet. This is a win-win, win-win-win-win situation. It sure is. <laughs> join Thrive Market today and get $80 in free groceries. There they are again. Yep. <laughs> That's T-H-R-I-V-E market.com slash twilight effect to get $80 in free groceries. That's thrivemarket.com slash twilight effect. Thrivemarket.com slash twilight effect. They say that hair care is the new skin care, but there is one brand that has taken it to the next level. With a cult-like following, Kitsch has created game-changing essentials beauty enthusiasts swear by. From satin pillowcases to time-saving towels, Kitsch knows hair care doesn't stop in the shower. Kitsch offers game-changing, time-saving beauty essentials for hair, skin, and body. Whatever your budget, your skin type, your hair type, Kitsch believes you deserve little indulgences at affordable prices morning, noon, and night. I definitely deserve it. You definitely deserve it. We all deserve it. Yeah. Started in 2010 by selling hair ties door to door, literally just a hustle and a dream. Kitsch is self-funded, female founded, and now carried it in over 20,000 retail locations. 
Kitsch's bestsellers include satin pillowcases, caps and eye masks. Satin is vegan and cruelty free, not like the silk, which was made from silkworms. Mm -hmm. These are so great for your hair and skin while you sleep. Shampoo and conditioner bars. Yes, bars. Yes. We're, we're very excited about the bars. I really <laughs> like the bars. <laughs> yeah. And the Bottle Free Beauty is so up my alley. Oh, yeah. 100%. Quick dry hair towels. Those actually work like a dream. That's one of my favorite products that I have from them. Um, you seriously, you don't even know until you try it. It is magical. I have very thick hair, and I love these things. And don't forget about their classic hair ties and scrunchies. Kitsch is offering you 30% off your entire order at mykitsch.com slash twilight effect. That's right. 30% off anything and everything at my kitsch, spelled M-Y-K-I-T-S-C-H dot com slash twilight effect. That's E-F-F-E-C-T. One more time, that's mykitsch.com slash twilight effect for 30% off your order. <laughs> so we go from this magic. It's magical moment. Magical. Uh, it is magical. No, this kind of like funnier moment uh, too. It gets a, uh, I got a, I actually out loud was like, oh no. Oh yeah. Because she, uh, she like knocks Seth and knocks him against a tree. And like, they just remind me of dogs, these wolves. I know, but like why Seth? He's like the cute little one. And, and of course he's like, oh, oh, oh. it's not her fault. I it's mean, Jacob's I know. Fault. Way to go, Jacob. You yeah. Stupid and she Nessie hurts him, But he's baloney. okay. He's yeah, okay. He so is okay. He's a wolf. But I literally at this moment was like, no. <laughs> um, also, fun fact, watch this movie with your dogs. Because Lucy. They hear was, the noises? Lucy's over. And when all the wolves come up, she like perked up this morning and was like looking at the TV. And I was like, oh, this that's is great. funny. Yeah, I should have recorded it. What was it. it like watching this when you were on the scene? Were you, were you laughing as well when you were watching her do this? This whole thing? <sighs> no, because it was like, she has to be in actually like real in this moment and intense in this moment so if we were laughing we'd be really like jerks <laughs> like ha, be a jerk. <laughs> you're angry i mean like internally um, you know what i mean like yeah that was good perhaps i don't know i think like we were afraid um <laughs> hold on afraid. one more question in this one when this whole scene was going on what were the wolves like were they still running around in gray leotards i don't know i feel like Whenever they just like come up, they were just marks. Mm. Like we just had to like pretend they're like there. There's, yeah, that's a wolf. That's a wolf. Uh -huh. If we had to interact with them, then they had to. Oh, I see. Okay, got it. Yeah, I'm on board now. Yeah. Um, okay, so we move on to something that's very important to Alice. <laughs> Bella's birthday. Bella's birthday. God, you love a party. I love a party, you no really matter what. <laughs> Which, like, I think it's fair because. It is her first birthday as a vampire. What would that be called? Because there's like heavenly birthdays. There's unbirthday birthdays. There's half birthdays. What is this one? It's your undead birthday? Undead birthday. How appropriate to fall so soon to her real birthday. I know. That's easy to remember. So there goes Alice planning another party mm -hmm. as you would. Yeah. Why yeah. not? Yeah. And I think I'm more like I think I'm not more a party, particularly you know I mean. excited about the gift, not the party. Who wouldn't be excited about the gift? <laughs> I'm like, oh flipping my house? God, I've been waiting for this. We like built this in the forest. Um, so we like take Bella and Edward out to show her a gift and hand her a key to her own, their own like little cute cottage. That's like the way it's like a, it's like a mother-in-law suite. It's adorable. Yeah. But hold on. Why do Edward and Bella get their own little house and all of y'all live in the same house together? <laughs> Obviously, because they need privacy. Where was your guys' privacy? Like, well, is there a backstory we've, here? We've had privacy for a very long— Like, I think we're good, you know, we're good now. You're good on <laughs> sex for the rest of eternity now because— Yeah, we could also probably just, like, go have sex in the forest. I don't know. But, <laughs> <laughs> like, when we're hunting. Did we're Alice both. and Jasper get their own house in the beginning? Um, yeah, I think that we all do. Mm. Because, okay. Yeah, I think it's a thing. What if this is all just, right. like, the rotating house that— no, they built it for her. Um, oh. But, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry I put that in everyone's head. Okay. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I think it's it, they need their own house. They also are the first new couple with baby. That's true. So. And probably the last new vampire couple with a baby. The only, yeah. The only. They're the only ones. Um, but uh, we go Where in. is this place? It's just like, it's just like a hop, skip, and a jump away from the Cullen house. All We're all filming in the same place now? Yeah. I was, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, you mean IRL. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they kept them all really close. Look at me using IRL, guys. Where's that house now? So it was just a fake little buildup? 
I don't know if they like destroy. <laughs> if they broke it down, yeah, it was fake. Will you go stay at one of those houses with me someday? There's even one- if it's when we're like fifty and we just need like a girl's vacation away from the kids. I'm sure I could call someone. Yeah, somebody sent it to me. They're Airbnb being some of these places. <gasps> They're Airbnb being the place. Charlie's um, house, right? The Swan House and the Airbnb, the place that they went to for their uh, Island Renesmee or Island Esme. Where is it? Did we I forgot. They, sent, they just sent it to me two days ago, but it's been a couple of days. So <laughs> yeah, we've, <laughs> My had, head we've is had a couple of moments. Let's go okay. do that though. <laughs> so, okay. So we, I entered, I'm like, here, we got you this house. I get, I think Alice is like way too excited about their alone time. But anyways, um, <laughs> She's like, oh my God. Um, and uh, we do like a little tour of, of the house and it's like a sweet nursery. And it's very sweet. There, the closet, which of course is like amazing because it's Alice. Um, and and then the bed. <laughs> and we're like, it's go time. It's go time. Yeah. And I love how quickly they forget about their parenting duties. Like they well, just- obviously they have a billion people who are like, give me the baby. I know. Um, it's just so funny. I wish I could forget about my parenting duties that quickly to head into a bedroom and do what they're about to do, but that's a different... Listen, they're vampires. <laughs> it's on a totally different level. I know. And, I and know. their vampire baby actually has to sleep, I think. Ooh, that's right. I didn't think about that, but that brings up a good point because this is the part where she's like, she's having like an outside realization and says, vampires don't sleep, at which point she's basically like, oh my God, all they do all night is get down with the get down. Yeah. Wow. This is, she's like, this is great. What a life. Why didn't you turn me sooner? I know. Oh yeah. Good for them. Yeah. You know? I mean, it's a good thing he didn't because then they wouldn't have Renesme. But um, I remember everyone being like super hyped about this scene. And it is like 50 shades of vampire right now. <laughs> it's very, very steamy. I feel like I like have this this thing when I watch these scenes, because I like don't remember, I like barely remember this scene, but I, I feel like it's because I'm like watching people I know. I'm like, I'm not going to oh, watch this Oh, wait, scene. hold on. So I wasn't even going to bother asking you that because usually when it comes down to it, you're not in these areas when they're filming oh, it. Oh, no, I wasn't in that that moment. Oh. I'm just saying like, oh, gosh. <laughs> like, wow. No, Alice has left the building, everyone. <laughs> Let's just clarify that. She's not that excited about them all like hooking up. Oh. Um, no, but I just mean like watching it this morning. Um... Uh, like I, I don't like I like zone out during like sex scenes because I'm just like, Bleh. oh, I see when you're watching it. Yeah, damn, no, I Alice really wish we were in the person watching this together. Yeah, so I'm like, I don't even. That part's like kind of a blip for, for me. Anyways, um, <laughs> that's really funny. Yeah. Anyways, she's <laughs> prude and uncomfortable watching her friends make out. Um, we then go back. They like do their whole thing. We go back to the Colin house. Their whole thing. Yeah. We do the whole oh, thing. The whole Fifty Shades thing that I apparently just like glossed right over. Yeah. Um, and then we go back in. The, and it is the opposite of me. Basically, they walk right into the Colin house and he's like, so how's your sex life? I like, know. He's how's so everything feeling? Yeah. It's weird. Yeah. He's, he's a weirdo. Um, I love it though. It's, it's like some, very, yeah, suiting. Yeah. I mean, and it's like, you know, he's he's sweet and fine, but he's, uh, I think, is, uncomfortable. Yeah. So the whole family's standing around and they roll in like everyone. Talk about like walk of shame or whatever you want to call that walk yeah, of Yeah, that's whatever. so awkward. They're like, so uh, what'd you guys do? Wink, wink. I know. Awkward. The whole family. But this points out, is a great time to point out how unfortunate Carlisle's wig is. <laughs> That's what you were paying attention to. It's just— I mean, it is actually— I noticed that too in this scene. So you're right. I don't know if I noticed it the first movie, but I think after having Peter on— Well, they changed them in every movie. So, like, who knows? No, I mean, watching it the first time. Like, way back in the day. Oh, the first time you watched right, this movie. Right, right, right. Got it. Or even the last time I watched this movie when I wasn't picking it apart since we started this. Um, and then having Peter on talking about all his wigs where, you know, I was like, oh, my God, you guys all have— Whatever. It's things I didn't pay attention to because I was just so into it. I really paid attention to it this time. And I was like, what just happened there? It was almost like, he's just we so just hot. We just couldn't win with the wigs. Like, we were not winning any awards for like, our wigs. It just slumps over like this way. Yeah. It's really sad. It's unfortunate. Yeah. I it's wonder, so hot. I wonder if everyone else noticed this. Probably not. They were probably so into that moment. But yeah, anyway, I didn't notice it at first. And, you know. So, weird sex jokes. And then that's broken up by uh, Charlie Calls. As they're talking about their sex life. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and she doesn't answer. Um, she's like, I will deal with this tomorrow. But 
Well, they're they're talking about how she has to tell him or how somebody has to tell how she has to tell him. How she has to tell him that she died. <laughs> Hi, I'm dead. Right. How somebody needs to break the news to them. Yeah. And um which and, yeah, which Jake doesn't know. Jake's not in on the joke. Cause he's I, like, what? <laughs> yeah, but I really support this next move here. What they well, okay. So I this is what I noticed in the scene is that I was like, oh, he act, he was like, uh, I'm sorry, excuse me, what? You're leaving? Which is like, you can't do that because I've been printed on your daughter. Right. But he like kind of accepts it and is like chill about it. And I was like, wow, he's really matured a lot. No. Cut two. He's internal. He's like, uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-uh, uh-uh. Cut two. He's just become better at hiding it. He's playing the game now. Mm-hmm. He's become strategic, everyone. He's, he's yeah. grown up a little Something bit. Something he never was at any point before. No, he was just all raw emotion. And then he, so yeah, basically I'm like, he's matured. No, he hasn't. Because he goes straight to Charlie's house. And he <laughs> is like, hey, listen, things are different. Bella's different. And at, like, as he's saying this, he just like starts stripping and getting naked. And I laughed out loud. <laughs> Because can you imagine if you're Charlie and he's he's like things are a lot weirder than you think and he's like he's like oh my whoa, god <laughs> whoa I don't know what my daughter agreed to but As I he's am taking not in his pants off yeah <laughs> what would you be thinking let's name three things that he could have possibly been thinking that Bella joined a like sex cult oh <laughs> yeah. I was definitely thinking that he probably thinks well Jacob was gonna. I don't know. Well, I don't even know how to say I mean that nicely. She, right, she joined a sex cult. It's like everyone's into it. And they're like, dad, get in Things here. Things are a lot weirder. And I'm about to show you how weird it gets. Yeah. Dad. He's like, <laughs> what is happening right now? No, I laughed. Um, but uh, thankfully, I couldn't remember when I was watching this. I was like, does he actually get, like in my mind, I was like, what would be great is if like Bella just inter- interrupts him. So like Charlie just like, see, like basically is like, well, Jacob was about to get naked in front of me. And then like Bella like comes in. So I was like, I forgot that he turns into a wolf. At um, least he took his clothes off for this because— That's true. All the replacement clothes, I mean. But he was like, I don't want to be naked after— Right. When I have to talk to him oh, again. good point. But good point. Um, so Always he, thinking he's ahead. thinking ahead. Yeah. He's thinking ahead. We're proud of him. We've talked about this before, how life just gets really crazy. Um, and I feel like we never really carve out time to just— have moments of fun or being able to kind of like breathe and and reset. Um, And this is one of the reasons that I think Best Fiends has become, quickly become one of my favorite games because it's really easy to just go like, I'm going to take, you know, 10 minutes to, to play this. And like, it gives me this really nice kind of like reset and refresh. And I feel like we just don't do that often enough. Like we're always kind of like, we have to accomplish A, B, and C, but we all deserve a little downtime and a little fun, even as adults. Yeah, especially as adults. Yeah. <laughs> especially I've, as adults. I find it so much more, I'm going to say critical now yeah. to find, force some downtime, whether that is pretending I'm going to the bathroom so I can like just get a moment with a door <laughs> locked in between me. It, I think every mom does that. Yeah. Am I right? <laughs> I'm about to be on that. Yeah. Um, but, or, you know, I think staring at my phone got kind of old. So it's nice to have kind of all things combined. Like now I can go hide in my bathroom, stare at my screen, but actually do something fun. Yeah. Which is and nice. And it's free to download. So you have, it's literally guiltless. I use it whenever I'm traveling um, because you don't have to have, you don't have to be connected to Wi-Fi. That is literally, that which is, is so huge to me. How annoying is it when you get on a plane and like you don't have something, I you know, know, and it's connected to Wi-Fi and you have to wait that the takeoff and landing and like the taxing is the worst part. And I so know. I love the fact that you can literally play this any time that you want. I know. Um, maybe low-key obsessed. Yeah, it's been a super, I mean, saying it was a busy week has been an <laughs> understatement. It's been crazy. And I'm super proud of myself for getting to level 72. I'm on 112, but who's counting? Oh, did I, I meant 172. <laughs> yeah, I know. I meant 172. It's very exciting stuff. Well, I don't have two kids yet, so <laughs> <laughs> I have you there. Um, I'm telling you guys, though, it's it's so fun. Just do yourself a favor and download this. It's free to download. Uh, it's a mobile puzzle game with thousands of exciting levels and new adventures and challenges for every time you play. Um, I love the fact that there are thousands of levels because, you know, like, I don't want it to end. 
<laughs> so no. I'm so happy that there's I have so much further to go. Yeah, you need um, something to constantly look forward to. Yeah, uh, and there's dozens of unique fiends to collect, so you can really customize your team of fiends that you want to use to defeat menacing slugs, um, which I've become very skilled at. <laughs> uh, and you can power up your favorite fiends to new levels for even more powerful skills and watch them transform as they get stronger. Uh, plus, it has brand new events and challenges pop up all year round, so you've always got a chance to earn exclusive in-game items, characters, rewards. Yeah, it's like the gift the that keeps giving. It really is. <laughs> we have all earned some fun time. You've definitely earned your fun time. So <laughs> go to the App Store or Google Play to download Best Fiends for free. Plus, earn even more with $5 worth of in-game rewards when you reach level 5. That's friends without the R, Best Fiends. I really um, support this entire movement Yeah, because I think Bella's happier for it in the end. Everyone's happier for it in the end. Yeah, but like it was a little dumb. It was risky. Yeah, because he just, he didn't think about, he thought about like step one, step two, not like 10 steps ahead. And uh, you kind of he have needs to. to. You know, sometimes you need to make risky moves for, well, at this point, Bella doesn't th- think so. She's like, you're an idiot. No. And is furious because she's like, hey, I guess what? I think what? she appreciates it later just, though. Right now? No, later. Oh, well, duh. That's yeah, how this movie yeah, works. Yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but in the moment, it was a dumb thing to do. Right. She's like, now you put my dad's life in danger because anyone that knows about this, the Volturi will kill. So good on you. Can the Volturi, I mean, they would never get so close, but can they know what Jacob is thinking anyway, Shaper? Can they follow him? Can they see him? Anything with him, with uh, with uh, um, werewolves? Mm. Or is it only with other vampires and maybe humans? Well, Edward can read werewolves' minds, so probably. Oh, that's right. Yeah. I forgot about that. All right. So, yeah, probably. Mm -hmm. We should go back and read all the books and do this all over again. He also told uh, Charlie that uh, they adopted a niece. (laughs) They they adopted a niece. Oh. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Or something. Something They adopted someone. They adopted something. Uh, They adopted something, and it's not their baby. And uh, so, yeah, she basically— Okay. Backtrack. He tells her, she's like, you're an idiot. The Volturi now can kill my dad. And he's like, oh, also, I told your dad that you adopted a kid. And he'll be here in, like, 20 minutes. Yeah, it was, like, 10, Just actually. Just, like, boom, 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 boom. Yeah. Yeah, because who doesn't go out and adopt um, a toddler? Or She's not a toddler yet. A baby. Whatever. Who doesn't go out and adopt a baby when they become, like, deathly ill, <laughs> survives yeah. it, goes, yeah. <laughs> she's like, so, Dad, I'm basically dying. Uh, but I'm going to take this kid while I'm at it. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Yeah, none of it really Perfect She's timing. like, this is great. Great job, Jake. <laughs> you really That's set something us up. I would do. It's like, do I have one minute of time left in this hour? Great. I'm going to take it and make everything chaos. It's like what she did. She's like, I have nothing left in me, but I'm going to go ahead and adopt a child right now. Yeah. Is that a good analogy or a bad analogy? I don't know. I'm, I'm tired. Just, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> in any case, I think he's like set her up for failure when it comes to her dad being there in 10 minutes because he's like, he now knows I'm a werewolf. He knows that you're different. You were super ill, but you adopted a kid when you were super sick. And also you have 10 minutes to get ready. And she's like, cool, 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 cool. Uh, I hope I don't eat my dad. And <laughs> I need to like figure out how to be human. And so there's like this, which is actually a really funny scene, I think, of all of us like kind of around Bella trying to like tell her things to do to act like she's human. And we're, like, which is interesting because I think well, especially if we read the books, but also you knew that they don't breathe and, you know, they don't do all of these other things. But until this moment, I didn't think about the whole rest of the movies that we've already seen. Mm-hmm. And the entire time were you guys trying not to blink. I mean, I know there are parts where you were trying not to breathe in certain moments of like uh, Emmett being freezing in the water or whatever. But- yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, for us, it was really lucky because we re- we've been vampires for so long that like we know how to be human. Oh, that makes sense. We've been pretending for so long. So I, I think like, it's like the second part, nature. I like the part where, um, what's her name? I'm calling her Nikki in my head now. <laughs> Rosalie. Rosalie is like, don't slouch. He, no, she says do slouch. Oh, yeah, Humans do, slouch. do that. Yeah. Humans don't sit up straight or <laughs> whatever. She's like, you're right. Yeah. Was, and she's like, how's this? Oh, yeah. She, it's, oh, it's great. great. It's great. For a cartoon. Yeah. <laughs> but if you think about it, I was like, oh, man, that would be really difficult. And again, she's going to fail this miserably. <laughs> but she does pretty that good. That was really cute. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, then uh, then he shows up and we're all kind of like, okay, how's this going to go? And he basically like wants an explanation from Bella. 
Um, and kind he of— He looks so shattered right now. What? I do? No. Oh, my God. No. <laughs> He's like, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, my God. You look lovely. No. <sighs> Charlie looks so shattered right now. Oh, yeah. I know it's a really he small a, part. He does a really just, good job. Yeah, I need to just rewind to that one part because it was so sad where mm-hmm. when Jacob was trying to explain— She's and he paused and he's like, like, No, "No, she isn't. That was like, (sighs) it was a gutting moment. But, anyways, back to where we're at now. No, he looks shattered at this point. He's like happy to see her, but he's He's ragged. What is happening? Yeah. Um, Yeah. And and it's like this weird thing where, like, she does, you know, he know, like, he's like, I think this is just me, but I'm like, when he, when Jake, turns into a werewolf. Like, I imagine that he knows, like, one, everything is, like, starting to line up in his head about, like, all of these things that have happened in the the woods. But, like, I imagine he's probably heard stories about vampires and probably heard stories about werewolves, being that he's lived there his whole life. And, like, kind of, like, obviously, like, brushed it to the side that, like, there's got to be something in the back of his head that's, like, something is, something is very weird. Like, I imagine he's, like, even though he's not going to, like, blatantly be, like, my daughter's a vampire, like, there's, like, a bunch of things that happen where he's just, like, she's super cold when he, like, hugs her and, like, you see him register that and, like, she's been, like, super sick that he comes and then she's, like, super pale and, like, kind of rigid. Like, he's got to be, like, this it can't be real. But also, I just saw a naked boy turn into a werewolf. <laughs> a naked so, boy. <laughs> yeah. So, he, like, pretty, like, quickly accepts that she's, like, it's a don't ask, don't tell. But, like, and if you would buy, if you do that, then, like, you won't lose me again. And he's just, like, very, he's, like, okay. This is a part where I would love, because it has been so long since I've read the books, where I would love people to chime in on book info here. Did Charlie know at some point about vampires? I don't think he, like, I think it's a thing of where, like, even if it's like a, or like a myth. Yeah, like, I'm sure there's, like, urban legends that float around, you know, the town. Right? I feel like he would have definitely known about the werewolves because they were chasing, you know, the big wolves that they saw, or the big dogs or whatever that they saw. But um, <clears throat> I think it's one of those things where, like, he h- certainly had heard about them, but, like, you, you're you not going to wrap your head around that yeah. unless you see it. Like, re- like the Loch Ness Monster. Yeah. <laughs> the or, like, old Nessie. I feel like it's some people in, like, Aliens, where, like, people yeah. are like, yeah, they probably exist, but, like, if you, if, until you, like, see one in front of you, then you're, like, everything else that you've, like, kind of been like, yeah, maybe, I guess, like, who knows? But, like, probably not because that's yeah. not real. All of those things, all of a sudden, I'd be like, it's all real. Yeah. Like, if I saw an alien, I'd be like, vampires are real. Werewolves are real. All the things are real. Aliens are real. I don't know about vampires, though. There's a whole world that believes they are real, though. That's true. You found it. Yeah, I did. <laughs> okay. So. Back to the movie. Back to the movie. <laughs> um, he also, there's another moment where he's like, so you guys adopted this kid. Really looks like you, Bella. Mm-hmm. Like, has and that's your eyes. Says, don't ask, don't tell. Yeah. And so, like, he's kind of accepted this, this moment. Because he has no choice. This is he true. He has absolutely no choice. At this point, it's like you can see the exhaustion in his existence. Mm-hmm. And he's just like, you're okay. Everything's okay. She's okay. You're cold. But, like, you're my daughter and you're still here. Yeah, and I thought you were going to be dead. What's going to happen when sh- he's, like, you know, 95 and she still looks like she's 17, but— that's another movie. Yeah, they'll have to leave <laughs> at some point. And then he'll yeah. just have to come visit them probably. And he'll be like, my daughter moved to Alaska. We need another movie. Yeah. <laughs> this is what happens next. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, um, okay. So he he accepts it. He leaves and is just glad to have his daughter back in any form. Um, and then we quickly jump to like a, a light, more lighthearted moment where <laughs> Emmett stupidly challenges Bella. Um because they talk about how strong she is. And he's like, you're still not stronger than me. Silly boy. They go and arm wrestle in the forest. Um, and she spanks him. She spanks and then she's, him. And she's thriving, and it's wonderful. You can see in this shot, it really looks like, I don't know if they, how they did this, but I mean, he, like all of his veins are popping out all the way up through his arms, his neck and everything. Like he's really pushing and trying. Yeah. Like, how do you even do that if you're not? You just clench your I whole know, body like, up. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just kidding. I just did it. Imagine force. And especially if he has like any, like a little bit of force, even not a ton. You just like tense your whole body up and he did a really good job there. He did do a really good job. Um, so I imagine this was fun to watch. 
Don't need the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a pro, everyone. Okay. <laughs> um, but uh, no, it, this was like a, a more fun moment for sure. Um, and it's like you get to be like loud and rowdy. Like we never get to be loud and rowdy. And and so, yeah, this what was a fun the, one. What um, the rocks made out of? Or is that all just CGI or... Um, I don't remember what the rocks were made of. It probably styrofoam. <laughs> huh. So CGI, because there's like stuff they flying. Break it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, it all looks so real. Or I'm going to call Callan would know. He would know because he's punching yeah. it. She's he's beating she it punches up. it and it's like, that was the fun. That was actually funny to me too. She like beat, she like beats him and it's like, she has like testosterone raging, <laughs> raging through her body because she's like, ah, ah, but the rock and like hits it. I was like, that was... She okay. had testosterone when she was yelling about Nessie as well. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it is. You turn into a vampire, you get a dose of testosterone. Yeah. Um, okay, so like this, and this is a moment where like, it's like, it's like a homework montage. Like <laughs> Jacob and Sam like make up and Voltori send this like gift for Bella as like a blessing, accepting that she's been turned. Really um, beautiful gift as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's like this wonderful moment. And then they, you mentioned, or they mentioned like the only thing that is a little concerning is how quickly Renesmee is growing. And so they're like, we don't know because this is such a new thing, how much time we'll have with her because she's growing super quickly, which would be fine if she was a vampire and fully immortal, but she's not. She's also a human. So like, does she turn 104 in like a year? So maybe she just gets taller and taller and taller, but stays the same age. <laughs> That's a I mean that that's interesting theory. You know, because that's all that happens. She's getting taller and taller. <laughs> she just her hair gets longer and longer. And she gets taller and taller. That's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be awkward someday. Yeah, that'd be then she'd have a lot of awkward <laughs> stages. And then she would be in space. Um uh, okay, so um <laughs> thanks for that. What happens next? Um oh, so Renesme and Bella are playing in the field. Jake, of course, is there. He's always there. Um, and, and it's like the field, too. Yeah. Yeah. The, f- the field. The field. The foreshadowing field. Um, and Arena. Irina? Arena. Arena. Shows up. And uh, and then you see her get really upset all of a sudden. Mm-hmm. She's emotional. <laughs> she is really emotional. Nothing she makes wrong with stupid emotional, choices. She's, uh, yeah. These people just need to take a breath. Yeah. Like her and Jake and some other people— instead of making rash, take a just, breath just take <laughs> a <funny>. breath <laughs> even though you don't need to I wonder if meditation still works okay um, <laughs> my mind is doing great today we're Remember killing that, that it that meme I sent you that's me yeah we um, should do this more often okay so we just <laughs> run off five hours of sleep yeah um, okay so she gets upset she takes a vampire breath or doesn't runs off um, and you're like and she like jumps into the water where you're like that seems not good Great, something's gonna happen there. But the fa- the Colin family's like, no, she's family. It's fine. She's probably just like the whole Jacob thing still bothers her. Everything's gonna be great because of Laurent. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. And and they're wrong because the next thing you know, she's at the Volturi, tattletailing on us, telling them that she wants to report a crime. Mm-hmm. Um. And you see Aro just like. He's been waiting for this. Mm -hmm. Like, he wants to take out the Cullens and snatch Alice so badly, and he just wants a reason, and, like, this is the the reason that he's been waiting for. How does it feel to be so wanted? Oh, my God, so good. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, it's—I mean, oh, God, I wish everyone stopped fighting over me. Um, (laughs) But she's special. She is special. Um, So he wants her so badly, and um, and then we flash back to the Cullen house— um, Edward's on the piano. They still think everything's fine. And oh, then this moment though. Oh, with Get Renesmee. out of here with this moment. First of all, I'm like, play me the piano and I melt to the ground. That's yeah. my one thing. And Rob actually plays piano, I guys. I know. Yeah. I mean, and guitar. he sings, but they're doing it together as father and daughter. Which yeah, that's sweet. It's sweet now. Watch when you see what Paul looks like as a father. Yeah. Game changing. I don't care how obsessed you think you are with him now. As a father, it's like a whole new you level. You see up. your father with your kids. And yes, that's- it's done. And it's just like, Watching that sweet little moment. Yeah. I could have been lost in that forever. And then it's shattered of like course. the vase that Alice drops. <laughs> per use. <usual>. Yep. <laughs> um, gets her vision face on. Not going to do it. Come and, on. Uh, and realizes that uh, mm-hmm. the old Tory are now after them yeah. and they're coming to kill them because uh, Arena was not upset over Jacob. She was upset because she thinks that Renesmee is an immortal child. And uh, 
I initially was like, what's the problem? But Carlisle goes on to explain like, yeah, immortal children are very cute, but they throw temper tantrums when they're like two and they take out like massive amounts of people and they're super dangerous. Um, they destroy entire villages and like they had, they, people like experimented with this one time. It's not okay. Um, that whole flashback, if you will. Yeah. Horrifying. And I just love how they use tantrums because you think about how a kid has a tantrum They're now. terrifying when they're human. Oh, yeah. You're like, no, you can't run into the street and kill yourself. And then they're on the floor Why flailing not? like like you just tried to kill them or something. So yeah. it's really funny that they tied that in that way. It makes sense. And also totally makes sense yeah. that this is not allowed because it's horrifying. Yeah. Horrifying. And you do in this little kid that's like angelic looking with blood all over his face. You're just like, oh my God. I mean, it still sucks to like see them take out a, a even a vampire baby. Um, because you do see basically like the Colin or the the Collins, Voltori come. Um, and you see, oh, and you find out that this, the baby that's in the flashback was the Denali mother's baby. Mm -hmm. She created it. And so Arena knows firsthand, like this is not okay. This is what killed my mother. Mm -hmm. um, like, this has to be stopped. So anyways, you see once again that the Volturi are just savages yeah. because they, like, have smiles on their faces while they're just, like, destroying vampires and, and vampire babies. And Yeah, well, especially Jane, who is just so, so good at being creepy. Yeah. Um, and she just, like, tosses the baby into the bonfire. And she's like, to see you later. <laughs> she's a psycho. Peace out. Yeah. Yeah, no problems. Um, so we know, like, this, this is very, very bad. This is not good. Um, and we have to ask our friends for support. Um, and so, and basically we want them to help us, not to fight. We want them to be witnesses because we still are hoping that we can talk to the Volturi versus, like, go into, like, a full battle. Um, so we're like, okay, we have to go on this mission. Um, everyone starts packing. Sam shows up. And <laughs> Alice and Jasper have just, like, dipped out. He gives a note that Alice left. They had just, like, backtracked out of the room, apparently. Which you kind of saw. There was, like, a couple moments between Alice and Jasper where you're, like, she's communicating to him telepath. Tele is that right? Telepathically? Yeah. Yeah. I'm smart. Um, so anyways, they basically dip out and leave a note. And this was a tough, I think, I think we all know that Alice is the favorite. I say that genuinely. And this part of the movie, I mean, I had obviously already read the books as well, but this part of the books and the movies, mm -hmm. I remember just feeling so gutted and I couldn't see through it. <laughs> yeah. You were like, how dare she? Like... Kind of, but also like, where no. did you think that we I went though? I don't know. I was very emotionally vulnerable, vulnerability, <laughs> vulnerably. There we go. Vulnerably like attached to this book, and I was really along for the ride. I didn't notice the wigs. I didn't notice anything. So I don't. I don't know yeah, what I was yeah, thinking. Okay. I was just like in the story. And exactly. Like, no, how, Alice. Exactly how you guys how it was written to be read. Yeah, I was there for it. But I remember this part hit me. I was like, how is this possible? Yeah. <laughs> Until I started figuring it out. But, but yeah, she has a plan. She like of, of course you know. she does, and it totally makes sense afterwards. Yeah, but man, that was in a the tough moment. Pill to swallow. It was in the moment. It was like, no, not Alice. Gotcha. How could you? Yeah. Um, yeah. So she <laughs> she leaves a note, um, and she says, "Gather as many witnesses as you can," and uh, basically, like it's all happening when the snow sticks to the ground. But it's That's like specific. Yeah, but like kind of everyone else is like, okay, what is that? What does that mean? Well, yeah, because Carlisle's um, like, they've left us. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like, I feel like they're, I mean, I'm, I'm very defensive over Alice, but I'm like, obviously, they didn't just like, they weren't just like, listen, it's us or them. Right. Gotta go. Gotta go. Yeah. It's time. After all this, it's, it's time. It's time. Um, Were you so bummed that you had to leave a good part of the movie at this point? No. No, because I think what's cool about Alice is that her character is always spoken about. Mm -hmm. So, like, a lot of times, even if Alice isn't in the film, like, she's extremely relevant to the film. Um, and there's always, like, a like I feel like Alice kind of, like, saves the day a lot. And so there's always these, like, wonderful, like, return moments for her. So I was cool. And I was probably happy to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Get this, all the sleep in, girl. Yeah, <laughs> at this point, I mean, that's just me projecting. 
Um, but no, I think <laughs> at this, this point, like we were so all over the place and like there was like press on our days off and da, 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 that having a little bit of a breather is not the worst thing. And I was like, oh, and I'm going to come back and save the day. Spoiler alert. Like, okay, yeah, I can't wait till we get there. <laughs> we're we have to stop here. We're a ways. Yeah. Oh, no, here? Yeah. I wasn't expecting that. Alice's departure. I should be expecting that. Yep. So that's that's all that we have for you guys today. Oh, uh, my Well, goodness. as far as the, the breakdown of the movie goes, we're not done yet. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, okay. Okay, so we are going to move on to burning question. Yeah. I feel like we haven't done this in a while. Yeah. I I can't. I was trying to think. I can't remember the last time we did them. Well, here we are. Oh boy! Welcome to my. Do you have burning questions? I do. I do have some burning questions. Still. <sighs> yeah. Well, you know, I come up with new ones each um, each rewatch, and <laughs> these ones go perfectly with this last rewatch because Alice, Miss Eager to send Edward and Bella off to their sex dungeon. <laughs> I love that the cottage is a <laughs> sex dungeon. <laughs> Which remind? Okay, never mind. No, let's hear it. <laughs> There's this Netflix show, <laughs> and it's this like older British woman, and she creates sex rooms for couples. And it was like the mo- and I was like, what is this? And it's like d- different than like what you would expect. And it's just they called her the Mary Poppins of sex rooms, and it was a whole thing. I was just my mind was like the Mary Poppins of sex rooms. Yeah, but it was like what a title different than you would. It's like honestly like I picture the big bag Alice- and she's pulling out this giant. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's like, it ends up being, like, some of it is, like, the couple just wants something that's, like, sensual, that's theirs, that makes them feel, like, in the mood versus, like, their bland bedroom or, like, something away from, like, the kids or whatever. It's, like, gives them a time to, like, reconnect, which if Alice created a quote-unquote sex room, it would be more like that, less BDSM, (laughs) but... Who needs burning questions? Keep talking. This is great. This is what I do in my spare time. It's on Netflix, everyone. Um, Fun fact that has something to do with this, and then we'll get to the burning questions. Did you know that you were not supposed to have family, aka children, photos in your bedroom with your husband or wife? I can see. I I, know I did not know that, but makes sense psychologically. Yeah. I have my kids blasted all over the wall. You have an eyelash on your face. I have been literally, like, all my eyelashes. There you go. You got it. One shot. <laughs> One shot. They've been sticking nonstop, so I'm just sitting here like Bella. Like, she's all humanizing. <laughs> like, well, she's really good at oh, doing the Bella thing. It's really going for it. Okay. All right. So, what do, we have? <laughs> what do you need to know about the sex room? Oh, no, I don't need to know about the sex room. I just wondered, since um, they made note about how, or comment about how when Ja- oh, let me get my names. Jeez. I'm like getting so confused with real names and, you know, stage names. Um, when Emmett and Rosalie, they had mm-hmm. to stay away from them for like an entire decade. Yeah. Because they, you know, fill in the blanks there. Mm-hmm. Um, what was Jasper and Alice's story like? Could you, like, how how long did people need to stay away from you? And I just wondered, like, how many times a day were you off doing the shebang a bang? Like 50, 11 times a day. Was that a word? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Fit 11. Wow. Um, a lot of times. No, I think they, like, are all extremely active in the beginning. But I think that Alice and, and Jasper are much, like, he's a Southern gentleman. And so, like, and— and He I also think rides horses, though, so. What does that mean? I don't know. I'm just, you know, <laughs> visually, I'm just, you're very, like, he acrobatic. He also rides horses. He rides horses. You're very acrobatic. I feel like combined, this makes for a very interesting sexual union. Yeah. I think that they have— Less animalistic sex than than uh, Rosalie and, and Emmett, but like you guys only swing dance. So this is just all we yeah. swing dance. Um, <laughs> super passionate, but I think they're they're much more like it's a little bit more behind the scenes. Like I think Alice is a lot more proper in person. So even though like they were getting it on all the time um, and have a great sexual relationship, that it was like behind closed doors and a little bit Alex more. Is, uh, Alex. Alex and Casper. Who is that? Alex? Is a <laughs> Alex and Casper have a great relationship. <laughs> yeah, but I think all of like in their own right, like everyone needs their own time because we are like every again like when you're a vampire, everything is heightened. Oh my goodness! I know. This sounds fun. I, vampires are real. Then like that later in my life, I would like to be changed to one. I would like to be changed to one as well with you. Yeah. Okay. I'm glad we sorted that. <laughs> um. Did. Jasper and Alice have a wedding. Yeah. What was it like? Oh, did they have a wedding? What was it like? I think theirs was much more, if I had to guess, I would say she, hers is like more art deck, like very like 
Gatsby. Mm, I can see that. Yeah. So Was I there a mini horse there? Very. What's your obsession with horses? You had a mini horse at your wedding. <laughs> I did not. Just to clarify, everyone. <laughs> I did not plan my wedding around Twilight or Alice. I just happen to like nature <laughs> and beautiful I'm only things. I'm talking about the mini horse because I you did had have one. I did have a mini horse at my wedding, which was a hit. Yeah, it was. <laughs> the fan really liked it. Yeah. <laughs> the adults liked it. The babies liked it. Um, the, I don't think there was a mini horse there. I think that that would be, I feel like Jasper would be appalled. <laughs> he would be like, what is this? Who doesn't like a mini horse? South man. Um, but uh, but yeah, it's either like I would at first I was thinking like it would have been this like beautiful like southern wedding because he's southern and maybe she played into that, but I don't think so. I think it was more like her like very like glam, you know, Gatsby themed wedding. And, was the like, whole family there? Whole family, and I think everyone was required to dress up. Was there anybody where you were like do we have to invite that person? Alice is pretty sassy. And like, I yeah. feel like, no, she was like, if I don't want them there. Yeah. Then- I feel like that one guy who ends up hooking up or connecting with the electric girl at the end. Oh, yeah. Lee. I feel like maybe he well, was his, not invited. I forget what his, what is his stage name? Anyway, Lee Pace plays him and he's fantastic. Um, yeah. But yeah, I love their little, their moment. I know, me too. You know, their bedroom time is going to be really interesting. Very electric. Yes. Yeah. Super, it's, it's an electric relationship. Yeah. <laughs> Those are the best ones. <laughs> We're super old. Okay. Um, were there any, like, creepy Renesmee dolls on set that needed to be used for things? <laughs> when needed said to newborn... be used for things. Well, you know what I mean? Like, was the newborn always available? Did they need to use creepy um, doll at any point? Yeah, there's always a bit. There's always, like, a stand-in doll for babies. Um they suck because you have to like hold them and pretend they're real. But um, but yeah, I don't remember if it was like particularly creepy or not. All the, I mean, yeah, all baby dolls are pretty creepy, especially if they like weight them and make them feel like real humans. Um, Here's a question. But we definitely did not, I can tell you that that Peter and I did not play with, with the Renesmee doll. <laughs> the way that we did with the mannequin for Bella. Yeah, <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> oh my so god learning. I did not see that they're like they're like that is the incorrect <laughs> answer Ashley right now everyone we have a screen in front of us with the Renesmee doll up what is that Nikki is not bothered at all that's not that can't be real <laughs> um Oh my gosh, that's funny. Somebody just showed me this yesterday. I just like like block some things out of my mind. And this is one of them. Is that and now the I'm dream actual about it. doll? No. That is horrifying. Okay, who owns the doll? Who owns the doll? And who Someone owns? Someone has to own the doll. We need Come to have forward. Them on. Come forward. Who owns the doll? That's and does terrifying. anyone own um, Bella Body? Ew, I freaking hope not. Can you imagine? Ugh. You're like giving a tour of your house and that's you go to this dungeon and you're if like, was- here's. My there's, <laughs> there's some things from like th- from movies that I've done where like they I remember them they were like gonna auction off some of our stuff and there were there were things of my like cat my wardrobe where I was like no you don't have permission to do that that's freaking weird and like what just like, like I wore this like lingerie like outfit once and I was like I don't want that auctioned off like that's weird like there's people who buy people's socks and panties and I'm not into it so I feel like hopefully Bella got the right to refusal. Of uh, or Kristen got the right of that would be that. super creepy. That would that's just it. You don't need you don't even want to meet the like. I wouldn't want to make that transaction happen because then you'd have to. How like, awkward is that? Handing over, you're like here. Don't tell anyone. Taking cash, handing over Bella's body. <laughs> Maybe it's with the oh. So the Renesmee doll apparently is in a Twilight museum. That's comforting. Maybe we should check and see. It's a museum. There's a museum. There's a Twilight museum in Forks that I've never been to. We can, can do we a go? whole trip. <sighs> I would actually I would actually do that because I haven't like. I've seen multiple people do it, and it's it would be like the amount of nostalgia I would feel would be crazy. Oh my gosh, this would be like I thought this was a dream come true. That would be like on another planet. I feel like we know people, and we could set this up. Yeah, can we do it before baby? No, <laughs> then it's never I'm happening. Like basically, gonna <laughs> I know give what happens birth after right this. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a fun podcast. Hey. <laughs> Hopefully it goes better than Bella's. Yeah. <laughs> well, you can that hope is, I mean, that is the last of my questions, but I do have one. I don't know if it's burning. You said that's the last of my questions, but I have one more question. I kn- yeah, that made absolutely no sense, yeah. but that's what I'm here for. Mm-hmm. That's my MO. Um, 
the key that you handed over to said sex dungeon looked very similar to the key on the back of your ear that you no. have matching with your best friend, Katie. This Is this a sex dungeon key joke? It's a sex dungeon <laughs> key tattoo that I convinced my best friend to get yeah, with me. I knew um, it. No, this is a Tiffany's key. Ah, uh, yeah. Who's Tiffany? I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Sweet Jesus, help me. <laughs> um, no, I got us matching Tiffany's necklaces, and I think she got, she lost hers, and I was like, Ugh, okay, I'll just get it tattooed, because then you can't quit me. That's hilarious yeah. and adorable. <laughs> Those are fun. Yeah. Um, all right, now we're going to go to voicemails. Oh, yay. Voicemails. Hello, Ashley and Melanie. My name is Scarlett. I am 14 years old and a huge TwiHeart. I am a member of the Twilight Resurgence. And my question to you guys is, does anything in the lore ever make you uncomfortable? Like the fact that Jasper was a former Confederate soldier or the fact that there is a lack of diversity in LGBTQIA plus people and people of color? And my other question is, do you guys think that anything in the series is potentially a bad influence for the large teen-based audience? Like the fact that if an angry, scary, brutish boy stares at you all the time, he secretly has a very passionate love for you. And if he sneaks into your room at night, it's totally okay. Like she gets us. <laughs> Um, okay, so the first part of the question, um, the lack of representation, I think, is certainly something that wasn't at the time on my radar in the way that it is now. I think we've all kind of shown an immense amount of growth um, since the franchise came out. And I think for that, it's I mean, that's tough because I don't think this, because this was something that came specifically from Stephanie's dream, um, the initial kind of like core cast, I, I feel, and if you look at kind of uh, the way that was mapped out, I think that's that's tough because it was some these characters came from her mind from a dream. So for me, I don't think it was ever, and and you know, I knew Stephanie, and and I don't think that was ever something that was like an intentional thing. Um, but I certainly kind of looking back, like I think if someone has the opportunity to remake this, that that is something you would certainly see addressed. At least I hope so. I would imagine so sure. as well. These are great questions. Uh, if if we think anything was ever a bad influence for young minds watching this film, which... All of it. Yeah, Mel and I yeah. have addressed, <laughs> have addressed a, a couple of times in this where we're like, okay, like if you're, if you know, bird's eye view looking at this, yeah, there's certainly things that I would I would look at as a red flag. And, and certainly like if my child was watching this, go, okay, in the context of this film, we understand that he is a, a vampire. Um, and so there's reasons why he's acting this way. And he actually really wants to protect her. Um, but the way that it's coming off does seem extremely overprotective and dangerous. And so I think for me, you know, hopefully other people can differentiate that as well um, in the same way that we did. But I think, you know, at this point, kind of looking at it now, I, I, I certainly think it's worth a parent having a conversation with their kid going, okay, we all know that this, is, this isn't real and this is the circumstance and the setup. But if this were to happen in your life, it's a very different situation. Right. Well, also that fantasy can be so deep into your core from being into a movie like this. And I know that personally because it was for me. Yeah. That that can get confusing. If you are younger and you can relate those types types of personality traits or actions or whatever yeah. to feed that fantasy that you think that you want. So that does make a lot of sense. But um, yeah, all of it. All of it is kind of not... I mean, aside from Bella, she's a very strong-willed person. She stands up for herself, all these things. Except but, the part where she <laughs> tries to throw herself off a cliff to, for the adrenaline rush. Yeah, that was silly. Yeah, don't, yeah, don't do, do that. Do that. <laughs> do that. I wonder how many times, if we can go back and make like a montage of all the times we've just went, yeah, don't do that. Throughout this podcast, it would probably be pretty funny. Yeah. Don't do most of these things. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so, very astute observation. <laughs> Hi, Ashley and Mel. Um, this is also Ashley. Um, my question for you is, um, a couple years ago, I got to be in one of the Twilight uh, Storytellers short films. And it was all about James' backstory. 
And I was wondering if you guys would want to know the backstory for any other Twilight character. Thanks. I mean, yeah, I think all of the... Because a part of what I love about this is I also love the idea of vampires. Um, And so I think all the vampires have such... Like, I would be fascinated where all of them came from. I think particularly the evil ones <laughs> where I'm like, I want to know Jane's backstory and I want to know Aro's backstory and I want to know like how they came to be as savage as they are. So I feel like they're, I'm always, like all of my answers are always like, oh yeah, the villain, because they're just so fascinating. You just, I'm, I want to know what makes them tick and why. I personally would want, there's not many characters that I, vampire characters that I wouldn't want to know the backstory of. In fact, yeah. if they had a way of, you know how they have those movies where they do everyone's different story and then they combine oh, it all like at crash. the end? Maybe. I haven't seen it. Don't judge me. Um, something like that would be super interesting because one thing we know is always there is a Volturi. Mm-hmm. So that could be the main tying in factor. But I'm talking, especially going through this movie now, seeing all of the extended vampire family. Mm-hmm. I would love to see... How they all came together any, in one thing. Yes, yeah. all of it. And then leading up to... Yeah, that would be really cool. Yeah, it's surprising to me that this hasn't been done. I don't know the inner workings of it, but like there's so much gold there. So much. Everyone wants it to live on. Yeah. Everyone wants Twilight to live on. We're all fascinated. We need more info. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, that's my cat in the background. (laughs) She wants to say hi. Hi, my name is Charlotte. I'm coming to you from Warwickshire in the UK. I was curious about what it was like for Ashley to film the films in comparison to watching them had you have not been in the film god forbid as alice cullen the reigning queen would you have been a fan would you have have gone and watched them like melanie and you know lived lived through them vicariously as we do or is it not necessarily your thing i hope you're both okay love you oh my gosh I love you and your cat. <laughs> I love the that cat. That was, I was like, wait, what? Um, so, yeah, I would have, listen, it's, I think, yes, I was going to say if I hadn't, <clears throat> if I hadn't read the books that I don't, I don't know, um, but I, I think so, because I think there's something about this franchise in particular that really, like, there's so much that we are able to connect to. Um, that I would have been roped in as well. I will say after I read the books, before I uh, booked the role, uh, before I auditioned, I read the books and was like, oh my God, I'm obsessed. I have to do this and like put all of my energy and my being into booking this role. Um, so yeah, I mean, I certainly would have been, you know, lining up around the corner and and kind of in the same boat that everyone else was in. Um, and it's been really fascinating to watch this now versus when I was in it. Because I think, you know, I've mentioned before that when we were doing this, like you're in such a whirlwind and such a bubble that it's, and and it's like terrible to watch yourself on screen. (laughs) At least for me where I'm like, oh gosh, because you're just thinking about all the things that like you could have done differently or you did wrong. I'm going through that now and it's awful. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. It's not, I don't, I'm like, don't watch yourself. Don't do it. So yeah, in the midst of it, I was like, oh God, I don't want to watch this. Um, And and now it's really cool to watch it kind of, you know, 10 years removed. Um, because I can kind of fall into the story now. And and especially doing this where we're like breaking everything down. Um, it's been a really cool kind of transition to be able to go like, oh yeah, like I want to root for this person or I think this person's being ridiculous or like I fell in love with this character. And so um, this has been really very, very cool. Hey, Ashley and Melanie. My name's Sam. I'm a huge fan and I had a question for Ashley. So when Alice was a human, she would... S- at, even at that point, be able to tell a future through premonitions. And similarly, we know that Bella uh, is kind of immune to other vampires' powers. So when those two both became vampires, they retained those powers. And my question is, do you think that that's a coincidence? Or do you think that them always presenting those properties and characteristics, I guess, meant that they were always meant to be vampires? Thank you. I'm such a fan. Thank you. <laughs> oh, all these questions are great. That's really um, good question. I, so it's so funny that you asked that because I, after watching this this morning, um, was kind of like, oh, it was really fate that, that Bella became a vampire. Like everything 
led up to this moment of her being a vampire and it all makes sense. And like, she makes more sense as a vampire than a human. Um, so I actually had that thought this morning where I was like, huh, like she, this is, this was her fate. Um, with Alice, I think it was a, a bit different because she had kind of more of a cruel situation and, and you know, she was kind of cast aside because of her ability to be able to, that she had premonitions and uh, was kind of thrown out by, you know, her family and, and had this whole horrible kind of backstory. And so for her, I think it was a saving grace almost. And it's why she is the way that she is as a vampire. Um, but I don't necessarily think that it was her fate. I think that obviously like there's everything that she was before was amplified when she became a vampire. Um, but uh, but I don't know that it was like necessarily her fate in the same way that I saw it with with Bella. That is the end of this episode. Oh, we're coming to an end. Oh, that went so quickly. I know. Um, we're so excited to have everyone here. Again, thanks for bearing with us <laughs> during this episode. Um, thank you for listening. Next week, we will be back for part two of our Breaking Dawn part two rewatch. Uh, you do not want to miss it. It'll be just as goofy as this one. <laughs> I promise. <laughs> Um, be sure to follow, rate, and review us. It really, really helps. And if you have any questions, um, please email them to twilight at castmedia.com. That is cast with a K. Or you can go to speakpipe.com slash twilight to leave us a voicemail, which clearly, I mean, honestly, I'm blown away by the voicemails that we've been getting. They're there. just so good. They're and so then you throw thoughtful. And a cat in there and it's just like, come on. These are the best. <laughs> like, love cats. <laughs> um, bring your animals. Um, and then, of course, if you guys want to watch us as well, you can... <laughs> I think after this episode, you definitely want to watch because Mel did all kinds of weird things. What? Oh, this episode? Yeah. Oh, it was so great. Was, yeah. So you can catch us on YouTube as well, everyone. <laughs> Thank you so much. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.